atomic number? Six. Six. How many valence electrons does it have? Four. One. How many more does it want? Oh, wait, no. It yeah, has four. 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 It has four ones, four, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So this lesson, the purpose, you will be able to justify carbon's importance as a building block for life. Were y'all here the other day when I finished building this? Sure. Look at us? No. no. Yeah, you started it. You started in our class. I'll slow it. You did that thing to your 4B. That's right. So yeah, this is glucose. This is glucose. Mm. Now it's got the one oxygen here, but the six carbon is right here. This is what's called a carbon ring. If any of y'all going on to science majors, you will take organic chemistry. Mm. You will take carbon rings. It's good thing. Why? Wow. It's all carbon rings. And you have to memorize what is at each location. Oh. Oh. You have to memorize this exact structure, be able to reiterate it on an exam. Along with many other organic molecules. Anyway, so does anything with carbon is organic? Right? Okay. So, reviewing carbon, it is a non metal. It is in the second period, remember, periods go this way, 14th group. Because all these guys are in the 14th group, what does that tell me about the elements? That they are. Let me think about it. Um, this is the vertical one. So all the guys here, they're, they all share one characteristic together. The one, um, what was it? Or one chemical property. What's that, Cedric? What you just said. Chemical property. What's the chemical property that they share? They I'm all have four valence electrons, guys, remember? Mm -hmm. All these guys have one. All these guys have two. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember this. I don't know how these work out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, that's eight. Yeah, I said that. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Yeah, I missed one. Yeah, because remember, these guys are stable. So they don't like to bond with stuff because they have a whole valence shell. So if we ever have a quiz on that, the little ones that are on the fourth row going across, they don't count. So it would just be the first, the second one. They would hop over. What, these guys? Yes. Yeah. They yeah, these guys are different. Okay, so we wouldn't look at that. We would just look at the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. From 15 to 18. Or from 14 to 18. Yeah. No, from 13, 13 to 18. Yeah. It we 13. don't count 3 13. to 12. So, yeah. These guys, you will not need to know about until you get to next year. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So we didn't really go over the Lewis dot structure. The Lewis dot structure is a useful tool for telling us how many guys can you, thank you. For telling us how many valence electrons there are very simply actually. Look how simple that is. So simple. It's like What's that? What is that? Sharing. That's C O two. So it would literally just be C and then two. O double bond C double bond two. Oh. Okay. It's a really useful structure for showing bonds, showing where electrons are, where yeah. they're linking in, where they're bonding. What's that? Um, you may have said this before. Can you use the four dots and you switch it around to make the bond? Huh? The dots on the top, it's four, right? Mm -hmm. You get the four and the four and the four. Well, so this is to show that the double bond. Oh. Okay. Oxygen has two to share. Carbon has two to share. Make sense? No. Mm -hmm. So. So. That's just a wide way to show it. Again, you're not really going to have to know that very much until next year, but just so you know what it looks like, okay? Mm, yep. Of course, I clicked somewhere else on my screen. That's for me, we're moving the octet roll. It wants eight to be stable. It needs four more, okay? Remember, remember, remember the octet roll, please really important, okay?
So one of the things that makes carbon so unique is the fact that not only does it make four bonds, but it makes four covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are the strongest bond. This, um, this PowerPoint is actually in your learn about it already, okay? Okay. This is Zach Pond? Mm -hmm. okay. Lesson nine, learn about it, it's already there. Okay. Remember, it's where they're sharing electrons. This is the strongest bond. The other thing is that we were playing with the chemistry, I was playing with the chemistry set a little bit last period. You can see by looking at this, where exactly the bonds go. Because, hold on one sec. I were to make just a simple CH4 molecule, which it does exist in nature. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe methane? Methane? Sound right? Whoever's watching something, please turn it off. CH4. It's methane. I haven't looked at chemistry, guys, really, other than outside our little review here in probably 12 years, so. Me for remembering so this is accurate. Favor, please. This is accurate as to how this would look. It's like a little pyramid. Hmm. That's exactly how it looks. But this strength, the structure, is what gives it its strength. You think you, you figure if you get a whole bunch of these bonded together, it's almost like a net, right? I see. Mhm. Mm I just see those like. Wow. So. You take it out. Covalent bonds are what help to give it its unique characteristics. You take it out. What? This. I won't break it. See, you take it out. Carbon combined with four other elements and itself. That's how it makes those long carbon chains. Okay? The shape has simple, it's called a tetrahedron. A diamond. It's what gives it the strength, okay? Mm -hmm. It makes it the perfect building block. That is why, like you can tell on this one. So here we go. Up here, this is um when we get to the actual structure of lipids. You'll learn that this is a fatty acid tail. This is a protein. Proteins, you will always be able to tell proteins are different because they have nitrogen. That's the only one that has nitrogen. This is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrate will always be a sugar ring. Okay? Someone give me a food that you eat that's a lipid. Um, oranges? But no, that's not a little bit. Technically, that's a carb. Oh, okay. It's a vitamin. I thought that was, yeah, I thought it was a vitamin. Sugar. Candy? Uh, it's fructose. It's not glucose. It's fructose. Corn. But fructose oh, yeah. is a sugar. All sugar are carbs. Avocado. Avocado. That's a healthy pizza. They're a good one. Corn is a lipid. Huh? Corn? Corn. Corn is a starch. That's a carb. Um. Yeah, cheese? Cheese is a carb. What's a lipid? Technically, because it's lactose. <laughs> What's a lipid? A lipid of fat. Oh, okay. I can butter. think of what? Butter. I was just going to say I have 25 pounds of it in my fridge right now. Butter. But, uh, I'm baking. Butter. <laughs> I'm getting ready to start baking Christmas cookies. Okay. Oh. Does that make more sense why I'm hoarding 25 pounds of butter now? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that I have planned on making little bags. Aww. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, who can think of a protein? Chicken. Oh yeah. Chicken. Cow. Egg. <laughs> Granola. Beef. Broccoli is um fiber. Beef. So any animal. Beef is protein. Any animal. Any animal really. Some are, well, you have to notice, like, so bacon's a good one, where you can say that's protein and a lipid. That has a crap ton of fat to it. Um, chicken is pretty lean, so that's only really protein. Um, there are many of the foods that we eat that are a little bit of both. That's a good one. That's also lipid, though. That has omega-3 fatty acids. 
that are really good for us. So that has a little bit of both. Megan? Kangaroo. We are not down under. I don't think anyone down here is eating kangaroo, but yes, technically that would be a person. So you can just we're, I would, by the way, guys, we are not touching on nucleic acids, which is also a macromolecule, mm -hmm. because we don't eat it. What? This so what unit really is just about the macromolecules we eat. Next unit is genetics. <laughs> we're not talking about nucleic acids very much. Nucleic acid is DNA. Okay? And just so to give you an idea, on how heavily involved macromolecules is in DNA. So this guy, obviously, is a DNA strand. All these little red strings in here, mm -hmm. hydrogen bonds. So these the are all hydrogen are, bonds. So the red strings that attach in the they're middle. holding together the nucleic acids that form the base pairs of your DNA. Okay. Oh. And that's the these what again? guys here, mm -hmm. ribose. In the white is the white. Ose. What, ose. What if it's, 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 it's sugar? It's, it's, it's a sugar. The <laughs> backbone of your DNA is sugar. Do you think that's a coincidence? No. No, no because it's super strong, right? You need something super strong to help keep it together. So the red is the sugar, the white is sugar? the what again? White are our phosphate group. And the green is the? Gro the green, blue, yellow, and pink are, new, are um, bases, oh. base pairs. We'll get into that next unit. But yeah, so you can see how important macromolecules are just to this one little thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can build that yourself, Ms. Art. Huh? You can build that yourself. No. Amazon. Oh. So, what I want you guys to do. You can stop. Oh, okay.